Hello everyone! Thank you Shadow Zedek for the follow, by the way. <laughs> yeah, much appreciated, buddy. Uh, yeah, we're just waiting for the games to start. We still have a couple of minutes, like two minutes to go over here. And then we will get the game started as best as we can. I'm really hoping for something good here. The previous games I've cast it, it was uh, last... Well, it was, yeah, last Wednesday? So, it was a while ago already. But, um, yeah, it, it was a disaster. <laughs> there were... It was a 3-0 for this team and uh, for Team Horizon, uh, another team I cast for, and uh, it were it was all quick circling all ins and it, you know what it's, you know it happens sometimes it's not the worst that can happen of course in life but uh, overall I was feeling like I wanted to cast some StarCraft 2 and it didn't really feel like we had a lot of StarCraft 2 that night so I'm just really hoping that we. We get to have some good StarCraft 2 here. <laughs> and yes, it is Dinkle Wolf. It is. And um, let me see, actually. It's not updating my alert thingamajig. And uh, yeah, really, Kosen. As in, really, Kosen? That is the best you could have come up with. That's right. It is. <laughs> really, really, Kosen. Oh, there it is. Okay, there. Now it, now it shows. Now it shows. All right. Of course, of course, I got to see it a lot quicker than it did in the. Uh, the there we go. Yeah, makes sense. It's uh, it's all in the delay. Oh God, to tackle a monster. Huh. Yeah, I, I don't think it was supposed to have that. That's interesting. I changed that. Um. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I actually did change that, but um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that all my custom custom GIFs that I made are not here right now. You know what? That is a bit loud. I think that's a bit loud. All right, I, I believe that's better. Let me see what happened with him. How, are people already in a lobby? Let me just quickly check over here. I don't think they are, so I have some time to quickly have a look at why my follow button is not... Well, has turned into a gigantic taco monster. Trying to eat my own chips here. Event list. Oh, it might have just. No, wait, this is not the one. Oh, look. Alert box. Huh. Alright, I guess I'll have to look into this at some other time because it does show the right animation here. Hmm. Oh well. Maybe maybe next time. You know what? Maybe next time we'll have to ride one. Wait, are they already playing? Okay, they're not. <laughs> I just said they were in-game. I got a little worried there for a moment. A short, brief moment. A little bit of pee came out, and now it seems we're alright. We're, we're in the lobby. We got invited. Oh man, I hope you guys are as excited as I am. This is a completely new environment for me. Um, not StarCraft 2, obviously. I've been playing StarCraft 2 ever since Wings of Liberty. I've never really gotten to a point where I've been amazing at it. Uh, I've, you know, I've, I've been okay. I've done alright for myself. Uh, but you know what, it's nothing to brag or write home about. So, uh, let's just keep it at that. And yeah, I just I just enjoy the casting side better. I enjoy the casting side a whole lot better, and uh, that's where I want to place myself, you know. 
That's what I want to do. That's what I really want to improve at. Still cost a lot of, uh, you know, paying attention in a sense. Not as much as just playing the game. But, um, yeah. <laughs> it's still a lot of fun. People seem to be enjoying it when I do it. So, you know what? That, that just adds more fun for me to the entire thing. I do really hope I will not be the person in charge of playing here. There we go. All right. You love Jif? <laughs> Is Jif the taco monster? Could be. Could be. Or is, are you just talking about uh, the gif of the the gif? Peanut butter. Oh, all right, all right. I see. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit confusing. Uh, as you may notice, I'm responding two minutes later than you are actually typing to me. Uh, it's just because of, you know, the way this tournament works. Uh, we don't want any stream cheaters, so that's why, you know, we, we try to keep it uh, like this on a two minute delay. Um, it's the the bare minimum that I'm allowed to get away with on uh, on this type of delay stuff. All right. Anyway, <laughs> let's see. All right, here we got over here for Team Angel Wings, the first game of tonight. It's a it's a Terran player, which already has me kind of stoked. I myself like to play a lot of Terran as well. It it's his name is uh, Project, Mr. Project, or Mrs. Project. Who who knows? And his or her opponent is a red color over here in the top right. He is from the team I have actually kind of infiltrated right now and <laughs> trying to I'm trying to cast as many games from as I possibly can. From Alpha X, Damrod. The EU side of Alpha X as well. I think that is important to note. And there we go. As we can see, he's going for a nice, quick, early hatchery. And uh, yeah, things seem to be going very standard in this case over here so far. Remind you, all right? Uh, I think I might. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. So, in game is what you mean, right, Shadow? In game invites. That yeah, will be all right. That's a interesting place for a spawning pool. No, I'm pretty far away. I'm not going to commentate too much about it. I've not seen it too many times over there. Maybe it does give a little bit more vision for whatever is happening over on this side. Um, even earlier on than when you would put like an overlord there or something. That could be a reason. That could be a reason why. And a quick expansion from Project as well. No early wrecks being added whatsoever. It's just a quick Reaper expand build in this case. Good stuff, good stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm wondering how you guys are doing as well. I'm, I hope I do bring a good quality streaming for you guys. And uh, yeah, well, it's it's going to be an adventure for all of us in this case. <laughs> uh, the Reaper, it's obviously a great map for the Reaper. The spawning pool is going to be able actually here to spot the Reaper a little bit earlier than maybe you, you would normally. Um, although the, the Overlord is here in a great position as well already, so... Maybe not too much of an importance, but still a little nice thing to think about. Reaper right here. Trying to get a good scout. Doesn't really see anything in particular. Already sees the third base. Unfortunately, he didn't get there in time to cancel or uh, de delay that for Dembrot. Dembrot really early with that third base. Just droning up here in this case. Going for the quick... Trying to get the creep tumor here by Project. Doesn't really get it. Ooh, it does get away in time as well. So keeping that Reaper alive always very important. Project on the opposite side. Going for a 1-1-1 one, one, one straight after a React. Actually, he did make a Marine after the Reaper. So he would be able to de uh, deny any... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading chat as well. Uh, it would be able to deny any really early on Overlord scouts, but um, Damrod decided to keep his Overlord kind of safe in this timing. And I can't really blame him. There's usually not that much you can scout in the Terran base at this time. Just going for some regular Hellions over here. And he, yeah, the Stim Pack being created as well. Wondering if we'll see a Medivac being created here or a quick Liberator. Maybe a Viking, who knows? 
anything can still happen in this case. I'm missing some Reaper action here. The Reaper didn't really get anything, did he? He did not. No, okay. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, he did get another scout. He saw that there's nothing really going on outside of just a mass production of uh, drones so far. But right after... The, well, actually, did he see the Baneling Nest going down? Baneling Nest... Well, it could be a little bit early, but you know what? It's nothing to worry about too much. Uh, 12 Zerglings on the way, though. That's a reasonable amount as well. It's going to be able to fend off any type of Hellion aggression in this case. As he did see this coming across with his overlord. Uh, the Queen's also already in a great position here to deny this from doing anything at all. And uh, Project smartly pulling away his Hellions here. More Zerglings being made. That's actually quite a lot of Zerglings, but he does go back into the drone production afterwards. And lay attack on the way. Alright, so nothing too crazy going on. And Project did decide to go for that early Viking and clearing out those overlords on the opposite, other side of the map. Already gotten, getting two kills there. And uh, Damrud might actually get a little bit. No, yeah, he's fine. He's fine on the supply already. Oh, fully aware of what was happening there. Gonna lose the two overlords and did not get himself supply blocks. So well played there by Damrud. A good reaction uh, by building those other overlords in time. 1-1 one, one upgrades as well on the way by Project. And the third base also being created. So it seems like we're just gonna go into a long game here in this sense. Uh, siege tanks also being created. This is obviously a great map for siege tanks. Dambrit does want to start that carapace as well. Um, he would have enough money right now, but maybe he is going for something else right now. I'm trying to see what else he wants to get first. Oh, the bailing speed. All right, yeah, bailing speed also obviously a very important upgrade. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing to to worry about there will definitely help out if there is some form of bio-aggression coming across the map. I do believe he did see a couple of uh, marines being built there at the start, so usually if it, it does become a heavy mech play, you wouldn't be out seeing those marines at the start anyway. Is it just me, or am I losing a couple of frames here? Oh, Dinkle, Dinkle also plays a lot of Terran, it seems. So already we uh, we feel a lot more, you know, personally attached together as uh, as the Terran people. <laughs> you know what? Everyone's a Terran, right? It doesn't matter what race you play. In a sense, you're already a Terran. It's just lovely to see those little boys try the micro and then, you know, either fail miserably and uh, rage at the game or <laughs> pull off the most amazing tricks and uh, jukes you can. Banelings, everything yeah, seeming to be alright here. And yeah, it does appear like there is an ask here for a pause. I'm gonna... Oh, that's my button. <laughs> uh, let me see. Is there anything I can shut down here myself that might actually benefit in this case? I'm not sure if I can. Sorry, I have a little legs. All right, there we go. So it is Demrud here that's having a little bit of lag. We are seeing a move out by projects at this time. So mm, we might have to restart this from a... Oh, yeah. We might have to restart this from a replay. All right. A little bit unfortunate there for the first game, but it does happen. Uh, nothing to do about it. Wait, did he... So after <laughs> afterwards, he came back and he said, "All right, it's good now." <laughs> after the game uh, ended, um, huh? All right, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll go to the score screen. <laughs> well, that that just happened. <laughs> That's a jolly good start right there, right from the get go. Oh, 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 my bad, my bad. That's uh, that's the background. All 
All right, yeah, we are going to get a resume from replay here. Now, as they are doing that, I'll just put on a little bit of music again. You know, just so we have something to uh, to entertain our earbuds with. the new guy as well it's very unlikely for me to you know be given any sort of um, any sort of responsibility by being the, the host or the whatsoever resuming from replay you know all right both players are ready again we're gonna hop on straight back into this game nothing to worry about nothing happened so far the game can still go into any direction. All right, we're closing down the music already again. And back to this scene. There we go. Perfect. Putting it on this. There we go. Recovering. This, <laughs> this loading screen always worries me a little bit. Just because, you know, it's the, the login screen. So I'm like, wait, did I just disconnect and just did it just what, what happens? But... <laughs> Uh, luckily, that's not the case. It's just, you know, the game recovering. When it decides to just, you know, use a different uh, learning screen. It's all good. This is the moment we can have a little sip of water. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, how are you all doing today? Everyone in chat a little bit happy. Um, having a good time. Game is resuming. Sound is enabled again and here we go. Continuing right where we left off. Project moving across the map with four Hellbats, a bunch of Marines and three Siege tanks in this case. And due to the location of the fourth base of Dambrit, it might become a little bit difficult here for him to clean this up. He hasn't really got a lot of creep spread in this location, this uh, general vicinity. Oh, nice. Not uh, using any paintings on that. That's some good micro there. But the siege tanks in a great, grandiose position here to kind of siege up this base. Now, Dambrit does have to get a nice flank going here. And it, yeah, he does have enough to clean this just up. Just completely fine, it seems. Actually, the queens. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. Didn't really see this other tank being that far back, but it, oh, very good. Very good placement there by the Terran as well. Um, and enough marines, actually, and another tank coming across, ready to continue this siege. And Damro does, you know, he doesn't have to completely commit right away. Well, one siege tank still on siege, so he's gonna try to take, um, make use of this situation here. I'm not sure if he has enough banelings though in this situation, in this case, but he manages to clean up all the siege tanks. So, yeah, it's still a pretty good situation here for Damrud. And Project does have to back off in this case. He might try to go for a little bit of a drop because they, he has not seen any, um, any mutilis. But no, he decides to still go for a full retreat. And uh, Dembrit going for the Hydralisk still. Now he did get, uh, let me see, the upgrades. He didn't get any uh, projectile upgrades. So I'm, I'm wondering if he's still going to go into some sort of ultra attack or something like that. Uh, or try to be a little bit quicker on that instead. Or, um, yeah, how much he's actually going to invest into these Hydralisk. We will have to see. Now, it's going to be very difficult for Dembrud or Project now to kind of go across the map and do anything at this time. Um, just because of that one engagement there where they kind of traded equally, right? Well, the, I guess, all right, Dembrud did lose a lot more units and minerals, it seems. But you know what? He, he, has a, he has a good enough amount of bases. He has a good amount of units here. And it's going to be still very difficult for Project to just walk across the map 
and uh, try to siege up again. Demrit already clearing out some rocks as well. That's going to help him try to do some potential uh, counter attacks if he does get attacked again. But Project now sending out, you know, small amounts of the units, trying to clear out that creep. And uh, right, good pickups there. Only lo losing three marines. And dropping his marines over here quite far away. Maybe expecting the Zerg creep to be very much further away. Already starting his 3-3 upgrade. So very nice early on with those upgrades. And that's going to provide quite a nice opportunity for him here. Because he is already, well, at least the one armor upgrade ahead. But he is going to be ahead with the 3-3. So that's going to put him two upgrades ahead in total uh, as soon as those finish. Uh, it's looking like that's going to be for quite a while, actually. And the Spire is being created as well. At the same time, we see the layer being created. So it most likely is going to be Brute Lords here. And can't seem that I blame him. It always does seem like they, you know, the Zerg has a lot more uh, success with the, the Brute Lords than with any type of Ultralisk. Another move out here by Project coming across, and these links actually kind of coming in a little bit uh, one by one in the line formation instead of really coming across in a good formation. But, uh, he does manage to clean this up. He did have enough paintings here to just blow up the rest of the army. So maybe not the cleanest engaged Emirate could have gotten, but it's still far, uh, you know, far en enough of what he needed to do. Let's see, this little drop over here, I'm not sure how much it's still going to be able to do. Damrod does seem to be completely aware of it, and... Um, well, this is a kind of a nice place to go, but there are the banings here, and the banings... Yeah, no, all right. <laughs> it seems like it was a little bit uh, distracted by this second push over here, and it ooh, actually did lose one medevac, it seems, so there was only enough for, for half the marines to get away there. Uh, the other ones got sacrificed to the great almighty Zerg god. Uh, it happens, you know what, it, it does happen from time to time. And uh, let's hope it is satisfied for now and it doesn't require any more Terran bloods to be spilled uh, for this moment. And it does seem like Damrod has been satisfied for now. And uh, just, you know, slowly sitting in his base. The 3-3 upgrades here is going to be done, but it seems like Project now, because he, of that, well, maybe... Maybe he will move out again, but I'm not sure if he should. Uh, he might just want to secure his fifth base. Uh, it feels a little bit, just a little bit mistimed there. If he did move out there with his 3-3, you know what? Well, it might have gone a lot different there in that situation. Or at least he would have traded out a lot better. And, uh, well, I had misspoken. It does seem to be uh, just uh, Ultralisk here, guys. I'm going back and forth. I just don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> that's, that's what it turns out to be. Um, also, the uh, fusion core being created over here, and there's two more starports being added. Now, call me crazy, but I'm not going to say anything, actually. That might, you know what, I'm, I don't know what that means anymore. <laughs> he might just be trying to get ready for, for the Great Aspire, or he might just try to do some sort of uh, liberator here. Um, you know what, you, you need both, really, right? You need the Vikings versus the Brute Lords, and you need the Liberators versus the Ultralisk. So, adding the extra Starports here makes a lot of sense. Very nice micro again from Damrid, pulling away those Banelings there. And there we go, he did see the Ultralisk, and now he is adding the Liberator. So, Project is in a very good position here, uh, trying to get ready for the upcoming attack of Damrid. And now... Trying to kite away here, trying to maximize the trade efficiency of his Terran army here. But Damrod might just have enough actually. I'm not sure how much or how long his Terran line is going to go for. He needs to micro as his tiny little heart out and it right, did kill those Ultralisk. Um, did we actually get the upgrade speed? Oh no, wait. It's, it's still not done. That's why probably Damrod correctly now pulling away again. Uh, did, oh, and there's also a drop on the way here. 
did get a couple of drones, that's nice. So it's only 10 workers in total, though, uh, having been killed. And that, that might be one of the things that uh, is making things for Project quite difficult. He hasn't really done any economic damage. The music was just a little bit louder. All right, thank you, Shadow, by the way, for that. I will make sure to lower it when we uh, go into the next break. Project putting down another command center here. Probably wants to try and take a liber or a, a command center. A planetary fortress. I don't know what I'm saying. A planetary fortress right there in the middle of the map. Just going for the mass CC and Damrod. You know, copying that in the opposite side of the map. Taking bases left, right and center. Um, I wouldn't mind it actually if he did start to expand at the bottom of the map as well. That would be a good sight to see, I believe. And here we go again. Damrod going in already right on top of the first line of siege tanks. I don't know if he has enough though with a decent amount of siege tanks behind this. It did equalize actually in uh, the upgrades. And there's still a heck of a lot of Hydralisk here. There's only one siege tank remaining behind this other siege tank. And Damrod might be actually able to get right on top of the Terran army. Uh, yeah, there we go. This, this might already, like, it's a really ragtag force here, but um, it's going to do a lot of damage. And yeah, Damrod ma manages to push through with just the slightest amount of unit advantage there. And, uh, well, damn. GG to Damrod. First game to goes to Alpha X. There we go. <laughs> Lowering the sound again just a little bit. Oh, that's too much. We'll try to keep it on this. I believe I, I do think this would be better, right? Do let me know. Do let me know, Shadow, again. It would be oh so lovely if you would. So GG to Damrit there. Making me very proud to be part of this community already. <laughs> right. We'll be waiting for the second game here. Let me just have a quick peek at what it is going to be. Oh, it's going to be another uh, ZVT, actually. And this time, it's going to be reversal. The Zerg is from Angel Wings, and the Terran is going to be from Alpha X. Alpha X Guardians. I do believe I should specify that, maybe. But maybe that's just a way for them to, you know... I mean, I mean, it is just overall, generally, the same thing, right? It is all the Alpha X people, but... Um, oh, well, just re-watching that fight right now, and it, yeah. Very unfortunate. It, it did still kind of feel like, you know, maybe something you could come back from, but... I can understand that already. If you if you have this many Zerg units, especially with those Corruptors as well, just taking down all the... Uh, Ooh, what's happening? I don't know. All oh, right, that was that was project. Just apologizing. All right. Um, yeah, with the corruptors there as well, it's going to be very difficult to get rid of those uh, ultralisks, which you would probably you know want to do with your uh, liberators. And then the ultralisks already killed most of the marines, so you couldn't really clear out the corruptors anymore. So, yeah, yeah. Very difficult spot there. Just uh, a little bit, you know, trading a little bit too much in the favor of the Zerg. Taking unfavorable fights there and um, yeah. Damra taking advantage of it. And now we're going into game number two. It's going to be on King's Cove. A beautiful map. The tropical map. Hmm. All right. Let me see. Did I get it right? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Second game. So, as I was saying already, from Team Angel Wings, we have now the Zerg player in the red collar. 
Mukashade. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Mukashade. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why, that's that's just a funny name to me, Mukashade. Mukashade. Who knows, who knows. And on the opposite side, we will have from Alpha X. Guardians, maybe Guardians, or maybe not Guardians, if we sh don't have to specify. But you know what, we will for this case. It is a pink Terran player, Suku. Ooh, cool. Please let me know if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, I, I would love to know. And that's a car outside. I'm not sure if you guys heard that, but... Um, Suku sending out his SCV quite early. He did make his barracks over here. And actually, is that a cap over there? It could be. Interesting. Interesting things going on. Hmm, and what do we have here? Hello, Gimlet. No, we do not have bugs here. This is a area for StarCraft 2. This is where we play, uh, well, at least uh, right now I'm casting uh, a clan war game between Alpha Wings and... Uh, no, wait, Angel Wings, sorry. Angel game Wings and pause. Alpha X. Suku is having hotkey problems. Suku is having hotkey problems. Or maybe he's just curious to know if Mukashade is having hotkey problems. Uh, which would be, you know, a little bit too polite, maybe. You know, you're at that point where you're so polite that it's become impolite. <laughs> where it's like, you know, you just keep asking them someone if they're alright. And then at the end, he's just like, yes, alright, I'm fine, you don't... <laughs> I don't know. One of those moments. I don't know if that's just me, but... It is a little bit weird, this barracks placement. And the bunker as well. He is making a bunker. I'm not sure if that bunker really is going to do something here. Maybe it's just a little bit of a fake out. It probably is. Um, and if it does finish this, you know what? He's going to have that Reaper to just pop in there. Um, but I, you know what? I do feel like it is a little bit of a fake out. Nothing too bad going on over here. Um, Mukashade is confused. <laughs> I'm confused as well. It does seem a little bit confusing in this case. Mukashade, only one worker on, on gas at, the, at this time as well. May, he might just put these two drones on gas, actually, did he? Oh, yeah, there we go. You see? Mukashade already aware of this. He's on top of his game. Why do I even question this? I should know better. Um. Yeah. All right. I'm. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> Suku had some problems with his hotkeys. Um. Wait. Isn't. Oh. Right. Oh. I remember now. Suku is on. Yeah. He is on. Uh, <laughs> he's not at home. He's uh, he's on a friend's laptop right now. He's playing on a friend's laptop. And that's probably why his hotkeys are Game messed up. Um, so I'm not sure how this is going to go for Suku. I, I, I don't fancy his odds that much. But maybe with this amount of drones being pulled, actually. Just from that one bunker, that's, that's extremely worth. Honestly, that's uh, pretty good. Although, is he going to... Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, he can't just put them here yet, because it's not done yet, can he? I would have liked it if he made him go back for the minerals, and then he could have maybe half started harvesting down there, but he didn't, so you know what? He, he has to send them back again. He, he lost quite a significant amount of timing there, or, you know, mining time. Uh, Suku also in position here to block any potential third base, and also already has his uh, command center on the low ground. Reaper on the way. The Zerklings will have to stay home, obviously, because of that threat of the Reaper. Um, at least to help clear out this area over here. Suku not building another bunker here. I, I don't blame him. It would probably, most likely, get destroyed by those Zerklings quite quickly. And here we go. Now the Reaper poking some pools in this situation. Trying to get some drones. Doesn't really get one, unfortunately. Mukashade quick on the draw with that 
uh, making a what, what you may call it, spore crawler and the links are not gonna get here in time so very nice for Suku getting this command center finished right in time and also making that marine right after the reaper good micro here actually good controlling trying to get well no well he still died so it doesn't matter too much but uh Fancy bit of um, Reaper Micro going on there, and at the same time we see an ambulance running across the map somewhere, trying to find it, guys. I can't. I'm sorry, but <laughs> um, all right. So, <laughs> oh, there's another one. I feel like something's happening. Oh, this might be. You know what? There might be some riots going on. I don't know what happens, but I. You know what? The the Dutch. The Dutch female people were uh, were doing a soccer thing, and uh, a a football. They were doing the football, and maybe there's some uh, some you know people that got really upset that they lost, or maybe they got upset because they won, or really happy that they won, and now they're they're in need of medical assistance because of that. Who knows? Something happens. Uh, maybe because of that. Maybe I'm just you know I'm just trying to fill up time <laughs> a little bit here as well. Uh, we got some aliens on the way. The starport as well. Reaper trying to get another scout. He's not going to see too much except for you know what? Again, there's just a lot of droning going on, and the third base has been created. Uh, and again, we see a Terran making those aliens. Third base also a very quick third base actually. Making that third base before any other barracks, before making anything out of the start ports at all. And wow, immediately, look at that guys, we can see a uh, fusion core going down. So we might be able to see here actually some battle cruises. That would be pretty cool. This map usually goes into heavy macro games if you do allow it to go so. I uh, guess that's with most maps, but you know what, it's quite difficult to kill off your opponent on this map. Getting, you know what, a respectable amount of SCV kills there. Gets two. With only four links, that, that you know, that's respectable. And then there's a lot of roaches on the way as well. Um, there's no hell in time, actually, uh, for, for Suka to respond to this. And uh, actually, uh, quickly having to make a, a banshee here. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to defend against this at all. He has hellions, but hellions are not really good against uh, roaches, my friend. Um, he's in a lot of trouble and he's also on a laptop, so this might just be the end for, for Suku, our laptop using friend here. And immediately going for that tech lab, so there's only gonna be one uh, Banshee created as well. But he, I guess he still does have the 3 CC, so maybe if the SUV do clean this up, he might be able to. You know what? No, he's not gonna be able to. He's, he's pretty much dead. Uh, he's a dead little Terran boy. And uh, it does get the repair off there, that's pretty cool. But uh, you know what, there's still like six or seven roaches in his base and he, he's making ravages as well at the same time. He lost all his SCVs, this is, uh, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much it, this is very unfortunate. Um, he was not able to spot this coming across the map quickly enough with his aliens and um, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess you could still lift up all these buildings and then wait until the Banshee kills all these units, but I don't think that's uh, that's an appropriate strategy to still win this game. Um, <laughs> Alright, Suku, I'm afraid you are in a bit of trouble here, my friend, and there we go, it's a GG. <laughs> GG! So, it, oh wait, I forgot the score screen as well. Oh well, it's 1-1 one, one now. I'll put it up into the 1-1 one, one scenario after this. No need to fear. One one that already means we're gonna get more than three games. Already this series has been taking a lot longer than the previous series that I got to cast. I don't know if you were all here when I was talking about it, but yeah, there was this series last or previous Wednesday. Um, and it was a it was a kind of a shit show. There were a lot of links. There was a lot of cheese, and uh, you know what? Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't happy with the casting then. <laughs> I was an unhappy caster. But uh, you know what? Having these macro games, well, semi macro games. I guess that second one, you know what? It's still a little bit of an all-in for from the roaches. 
Um, but, uh, you know what, there's still three bases and three bases, uh, you, you know. Uh, yeah, you can, you still go all in with three bases, but it's not as much, you know, as, or as heavy as a two base cheese. Two base cheese just always feels that much more dirty than anything else. Let us have a look right here. We're gonna be watching a ZVZ in this case. ZVZ, the most volatile matchup that we can deliver. Huh. I just got promoted to the lobby host. Oh, right, we have the wrong... <laughs> what is this map? <laughs> All right, I don't even know. I'm not gonna. What's the wrong map? It was a very old map. It looked like one of those maps that you know what some some teenager made at one time when they decided you know what I'm gonna make a map and they spend a good a good two hours on it. You know, maybe maybe three. But. Uh... Yeah, unfortunately, it's not the map we are playing on it. We are going to be playing on Thunderbird, not Thunder Isle. If you do want to see what map we did have loaded up, Thunder Isle was the one. It's a CVZ, and um, hmm, kind of curious right here. One of the players does appear to be a silver player. But then, if I do look at the Alpha SC2 Team League screen, it shows him as a master player as well. So who knows? Who knows? This is a bit of a curveball for me. Um, you know what? Curveballs are just kind of more fun, aren't they? I guess they are. In my opinion, they are. So let's just let's just have a good time with this. It's a CVC. Let's try to spot the roach where I'm earlier in the game this time. <laughs> that's a, that's my goal. When when someone is actually going all in. All right. Sound, name, and introduction. In the top right or left? Oh my god. In the top right, there's nothing. There's nothing over here. But in the top left, we have a Red Zerk player from Angel Wings tying up the series. Which reminds me that I have to do the 1-1. One -one. There we go. And his name. Pookie. 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 And his opponent. From the team, Alpha X. Perhaps Guardians, perhaps perhaps that is a bit unnecessary to mention. Perhaps it isn't, but he's also a Zerk, he's purple. His name, Dinkelswerf. Oh my god, <laughs> I hope that's anywhere near the ballpark of what, what I'm supposed to say. Uh, please do let me know if you're here and you do know that if, if, it, if it isn't the correct pronunciation, you know what, you would be helping me out here quite so, ever so much. Um, actually, a thing that has been bothering me, I'm gonna change this right now. Let me see, a gameplay and let's go to a damaged area that's gonna be a little bit prettier for the streaming. I'm sure all you StarCraft veterans don't have any problem with seeing the health boss at all time, but you know what, if you are new to the game, or you know what, you don't really understand what is happening as much, it's gonna be nice to see all the units and the fancy things, um, and not have to worry too much about the health boss. Or you know what, just seeing health boss running around. Like a true StarCraft enthusiast would just be... Dinkle is GM on NA. Wow, all right. Thank you for that little bit of insight, Shadow. Masters 1 to GM, 5.4k. That's very nice. That's uh, that's a good ranking. Um, you know what? That's uh, that's nothing to uh, nothing to laugh at. It takes a good amount of effort to get to that ranking, and uh, Dinkles Dinkles did it. Dinkle Dinkle. I'm just gonna call him Dinkle. I like that name actually. Thank you, Shadow. That's gonna help me out as well. Throughout this cast, or else I'm just going to be stumbling and uh, falling over that name pronunciation every time. Even though maybe as a Dutch person, you know, I, I shouldn't have too many problems with words with R in them. I still do somehow, some way. I do not know why. Um, 
it's a questionable thing, but uh, you know what? It doesn't really matter too much. Is Pauki actually going to go for a third base this quickly here? Wow, he is. That's quite a ballsy play. I guess he did see uh, the second base. No, he... Oh, yeah, he did see the second. You saw a little bit of creep there. Um, so he's fully aware that there is a two base going on. And he feels safe enough right here to go straight for that third base. It is immediately spotted by Dingle, though. So I'm very curious to see as how Dinkle is going to respond. He's putting down the Roach Worm, but he's also putting down a Evolution Chamber. In this case, this Evolution Chamber might just be to block off his uh, pathway later on, though, in, after his Roaches move out. So he can make a full wall off in case there is a counterattack of Zerglings. As he's moving his roaches out on the map. I pronounced it fine. Oh, thank God I did. All right. And here we go. That's a lot of links. They're all a little bit hurt, so it doesn't really show that I turned off the health bars. But it's all right. Queen's already here to block the entrance and poking them away. And there's a Nidus one actually being created. So with this evolution chamber under two queens, that's a perfect place now for him to deny any scouting. Uh, there's no overlord really in sight for, for Pauki either to scout this at this time. Uh, oh, well, I guess he still sees that there's no third base, but you know what? This overlord over here is going to have a beautiful spot to just create this Nidus worm. I'm not sure if Pauki is really thinking about this. Let's Let's see. Um, well, it's being created right now. He's not sending anything over to any corners of his base. So I'm pretty sure he's not thinking about it too much. He is making his own roach worm here. And uh, this could be this could be devastating, guys. This could just be the complete end already uh, of, this, of this game. And uh, here we go. Dinkle coming in with three roaches and three queens. Ready to pop down some, uh, pop down some drones. <laughs> Taking them downtown. And wow, already getting on this ramp as well. There's eight roaches in production now for Pauki. Can he hold on? Can he hold on for long enough? Not lose too many drones. Not too many queens already. Dinkle though, right on top of the production. So it's going to be very difficult for these roaches to really clump up and get a considerable force going. Uh, Pauki losing a lot of workers here and still sending in his roaches one by one. Not really getting a good group going in this situation. Uh, I think I think this could be a very much GG for... Yeah, there it is. There it is. GG. GG, well played. It's, uh, it's a nice all-in, a nice little... Uh, uh, well, yeah, all-in with the roaches and the Nidus Worm. Uh, Pauki completely getting caught off guard there. Uh, a little bit unfortunate, but you know what? That's what happens sometimes. You gotta be ready for those in the the bigger series, and uh, well, that means that Alpha X takes. What, what, I already had disabled the sound. Um, that means Alpha X takes this. Well, the third game in this series, right? No, wait. I need to think about this. Oh yeah, yeah, it was the third game. All right. I was like, did I forget about the game? Is this just you know what? We had such a lovely first game. And then, you know, you, well, ah, well, oh, well. <laughs> oh, we, we, yeah, it's already better. It's already better than last Wednesday. <laughs> that's what, that's all that matters. So, huh. Oh, boy. It looks like, actually, The fourth player for Alpha X is not available right here and is incapable of coming to play, which means that Angel Wings get a free win. So we're already going straight ahead into the ace match here. So that means this will be the final match deciding the entire series between these two groups, between these two clans, the two teams, the two StarCraft two communities that are fighting for, <laughs> for StarCraft dominance. Right, music. Let's get some music going. They are deciding their, uh, what you may call it, their players, which ones they want to send out, which ones they want to keep on the bench, because you know what, you you want to... You want to send out the best, don't you? You want to send the person... Well, not only the best, but probably also you kind of want to look or think about what the enemy is going to send in. And then um, try to kind of counter that. Or maybe, you know, 
you, you know the other player team has this very strong player that's maybe a Terran or a Zerg. So maybe you want to send in a person that's really good against Terran or feels very comfortable against Zerg. And um, it's a tightrope, it, you know what, sometimes it's a little bit of a coin toss as well in that case, but it's already, already kind of is, right? When you just sign up your team without really knowing who your opponent is. It kind of, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit of a boop match because of that, where it's just like, all right, well, that ended quite quickly. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, at times you get great games because of that as well. People being pushed to their extremes. Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god, alright, so... Alpha X, that player, actually... Did show up, but needed three minutes. But then... No, wait, actually, he isn't here. Wow. What a roller coaster of emotions. Uh. Angel Wings being very polite, though, they said it's no problem to wait. So they are willing to wait, but I'm I'm not sure if Alpha X wants to uh, wants to wait. Maybe they just want to go to the Ace match. Who knows? Or maybe maybe they just thought he could get here in three minutes, and then it was like, nope, I can't make it out. Actually, after all, a little bit unfortunate. There's a hellion riding by. Mm. Now this music is actually too soft, I do believe. Alright. I think the aces have been entered. Have they though? Let's have a look. It has been. Ooh. So Angel Wings sending out their fourth player. Xfag. Xfag 96 and uh, Alpha X sending out Demrud again. So Demrud said he would need a minute. So we're gonna give him a minute. We'll just have to wait a little bit. Oh, there we go. There is the lobby. Damrit is ready. He says back into a TVC. Emirate already showing he's very much capable of handling a TVC. Let's see how he does in this one.
right? I forgot about this this part of the music. It's just a weird bit, isn't it? Don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Anyway, we don't have to listen to it any much more because the game has been activated. It's going into the loading screen. We are going to see a unfamiliar player here for Damrod. It is X Vag. Um, was the fourth player for Team Angel Wings? We're gonna have to see what he has installed. He hasn't been able to play yet, so uh, anything can really happen. And uh, let us put this up there as well. The score screens right now. We have a 2 2 situation. We are in the ace match, although also known as the ace match. And uh, yeah, let's start off with the introductions for oh. <laughs> the introductions for Angel Wings. The Terran in the red color over here in the top left corner. X Fag. X Fag. The X Factor of the Terran race is him. But then it shortened to Vac and his opponent showing up in the color pink. It's a, uh, it's a Zerg. Full Alpha X. Alpha X Guardians in some cases. But maybe not in this one. I, I'm not completely sure. Either way, his name is Damred. Again, going for that quick expand into the uh, gas and pull. A very standard opening here for a macro Zerg. And on the other side, we see a uh, very standard opening for the, the Terran player as well. Going for Supply Depot, Rex, and then a Gas, if I do believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Making that Reaper already on this third base location over here as well. Stealing a little bit of minerals. You know what? You never know. You never know that might be the one bit of minerals that Dambrod needed to make a couple of more links or that one Ultralisk that he, you know, really needed in the late game. But, uh, you know what? x already took it. So he can't make that one unit anymore. Sending out the Reaper as well. Oh, this is a very old map for Reapers in my opinion. I'm, I'm not completely you know it's just for scouting i know but uh still oh that's a bit unlucky right getting that right as the reaper arrives and the scv is sitting there in the wrong position going home uh very much so disappointed uh luckily he doesn't have to show his face to the reaper the reaper obviously would have made fun of him for sitting at the complete wrong base um so yeah he has he has spared that shame and now he gets to go back into the uh, you know the big group of SCVs, so no one's really going to be able to spot him out anymore after this this short moment of, of the walk of shame here, and and he's gone forever. We'll never know again which one it was. Uh, <laughs> Demrud still doing some basic stuff over here as well. Um, Xfac, let's see. I'm I'm wondering how quickly he is going to take that third base as well. He did see the third base being made, unfortunately, of course, not being able to block it. Does put a little bit of strain on him in this case. He didn't lose any Reaper, though. So, he's still in a reasonable position. But it would be nice for him to be able to get something done here. Gets that Reap Tumor, that Reap Tumor. You know what? That's a good pick-off. That is very nice for him. Can't complain too much. I do hope you guys are having uh, fun with me casting in this case. This is, as I said, uh, my first time casting for Team Alpha X. Um, you know what? If you do have some feedback for me later on, do let me know. Just whisper it to me in the Discord. I am Kozan. Uh, you can just find me as Kozan, as a ca you know what, under the caster label there. And uh, yeah, you should be able to just pop a, pop a message there. If you do feel like, you know, you have some, some great valuable input that for me and please be kind i have a very very uh thin skin 
But it's alright, alright. A bunch of Hellions moving across the map, trying to deny some more creep, maybe get a couple of uh, drone kills or some zirkling barbecue. At the same time, moving a Liberator over here, we'll have to try to keep an eye out on that. Uh, this is most of the time the kind of the moment where things start to open up. He, you know what, he does want to use either the uh, Liberator to pull the Queens into a certain direction, or he uses the Hellions. Oh, there we go, into Hellbats, actually. He didn't see him make the Armory, but that's all right. Fortunately, he did hit the Overlord there, so he did give a little bit of an uh, inclination about what was about to happen. At the same time, all these Hellbats moving across, though, and there's not really a good response. I feel a little bit lag going on in the game, unfortunately, in this time. That might be very rough for them. The Banelings coming in, though, for the Hellbats. Not great splitting going on here. And it does look like he should be able to clean this up. Alright, he does have another Queen here, which he should be able to send over there. Um, but still, though, well, only two works being killed so far. And that's... Uh, he killed two queens. He might have killed some zerklings, actually. Now that had been... Oh, the supply depot is down. Damn it, this is your chance. Move. Get your zerklings in there. Come on. All right, it might not happen in this case. All right, there he goes. There he goes. All right, that supply depot did get uh, pushed upwards. But already, like, this is some pretty good damage. Denying all the mining here. And uh, quite a good... Fly lead as well, only nine, 39 workers actually right now for x -Fac. I'm not completely sure, maybe maybe trying to do this uh, damage on the opposite side of the map has kind of distract him, distracted him a little bit. Um, and Well, his third base was very late as well, but right now Damrod being able to... Six workers still do go down, but Damrod still in a beautiful position in this uh, on this map here. I don't think a lot can still go wrong here for him. He needs to make an overlord, though, if this overlord does go down. Oh, thank you for the follow, Muka Shade. Much appreciated, buddy. Um, all right, the overlord does stay alive, but there is a Viking. That Viking is being sent over here to clean that up. And there is the overlord. He does need to create another overlord, actually. Uh, so, well, all right, so there's going to be a little bit of a supply block. That's the one thing, really, that is in x Fax's favor right now. Uh, other than that, Damrod in a beautiful position to really take this map at this time. Upgrades as well, kind of going up equally in this case. And x deciding to go for the Marine tank uh, in composition in this case. It does appear two more reactors being pushed, uh, put, pulled down, put down as well. And that's in a good way. That's not in a, in a sense of them, uh, you know, they're being put down to death. No, this time they're just being put down to be created. Uh, I don't know why I specified that. I'm pretty sure you guys know. Either way, bunch of marines clearing out some creep. Doesn't really want to commit here. Probably just going to pick them up again with the med effects, right? All right, there we go. There we go. Maybe losing a little bit uh, too much there for what he managed to do with it. But you know what? I can't blame him. That was that was still... He probably was just doing something else. Actually, he never really killed this over. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Is he still sending his Viking? Hmm. It might be that... I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe he got distracted again. We'll see. This drop over here on the other side of the map. Let's see what it's going. It's going over here. Uh, already a bunch of queens here ready to defend. The Zerglings also being pulled over here. So nothing too uh, major going on. Great targeting there on the medevac as well by Damrods. Making sure that the Marines do not have any form of escape. And securing all those kills there. Um, that's a lot of medevacs actually. How many medevacs does he have? He has five medevacs still. Even though he lost... Let's see, we can see this, right? He lost... Oh, only one medevac. I thought he lost two for some reason. But that's alright. That's alright. Going for the mine uh, upgrade as well. So that's a very nice upgrade. He might switch these two around actually later on. Um, you know what? That That's probably a pretty good call from him. Seeing this many uh, Zerklings and Banelings, I, I feel like, you know what, well, Siege Tanks do really great against Hydralisk, uh, Zergling and Banelings as well. But maybe overall the Widowmine just a little bit more versatile and 
sometimes, you know, it's just more tricky to play against because as soon as you walk into the one shot of the widow mine, it's just, you know, it's, it does so much damage if you don't, if you're not paying attention to it fully. Um, so there's, there's maybe a little bit more potential there. In some cases, uh, you know what, comeback potential. I, should, I probably should specify. Right. Hammered really on top of clearing out all these drops as well. Very nice. Uh, even putting down some creep tumors over here to make sure that he has vision of any drop. Trying to get into the main base and he's going to be able to react as quickly as he wants to. Uh, going for the hive tech as well. So he's most likely going to try to go into Ultralisk in this case. Because I do not believe he has a spy. Let me double check. He does not. So most likely going to be Ultralisk in this case. Oh, this drop. This drop actually getting a little bit of damage done. Five kills. But uh, you know what? Still, it doesn't really matter at this uh, time. He has, he has some four bases. Going on to five bases fairly soon. Uh, x fact trying to keep up with the production as well. But... You know what, Demrit just very, very, very cleanly making sure to clean up all these drops and not let it to do too much damage. One Liberator coming in here as well. Now this is annoying, but overall I feel like he does have to, you know, do a little bit more. That only got one Hydralisk as well, that's, that's very rough for him this time. Definitely wanted to deny some mining time there, or at least get some drone kills. And it does look like he is coming out with a big push right now. He has, let us see, he has seven siege tanks. Actually, he never switched the factory onto a uh, reactor, so I'm not sure why he got the... Maybe, did he even finish it? Yeah, he did. All right, so I'm not sure why that happened. It doesn't really matter, though. Big engagement here. Damage coming from all angles. And you know what? He just steams rolls this army right now. Um, all the banelings connecting onto... Beautifully, honestly, onto the Marines here. And Cambridge just has so much. I feel like this this is pretty much GG, right? I, I can't see x Factor really pulling back here. Still has one siege tank here. Trying to send the S. Oh my god, that Baneling! <laughs> so that was nasty. Yeah, this is. Uh, these Hydralists are gonna get right on top of the production. There's one more siege tank on the high ground, and there it is. All right, GG has been called. Oh, Damrod taking the final game for Alpha X. Well played, Damrod. Good showing. He manages to take two games for Alpha X. So, probably the MVP of this clan war. Team fighting. Well played, well played. Well played by all the players, obviously. We had a lovely bunch of games here. And uh, you know what? It was a pleasure for me to be able to observe them and uh, cast them for you guys. Try to try to you know what entertain, make them a little bit more entertaining in a sense. And uh, I hope I succeeded in that. I wanna you know what? I wanna thank you guys again for watching and uh, also for giving the follows. I very much appreciate it. I hope you know what I kind of delivered um in some sense <laughs> in some senses of the way again if you do have some feedback for me i am on the discord server um in alpha x as well so if you you know what if you do feel like you got some pointers just throw them in there in a message i want to thank you guys though for you know what alpha uh, you know alpha team league uh i always love your tournaments and um yeah thank you for the players thank you to the viewers um, I probably should put my other screen on right here. Actually, it's not that much of a difference, but it's still, you know what? There we go. Thank you, viewers. Ending the stream for now. <laughs> it's a little bit of difference, but uh, you know what? That's why it's there. All right. So, um, yeah, I've been Kozen. I've been your caster. And uh, I'll be here hopefully more often. And um, yeah, I had a ton of fun. I hope you had as well. I will be playing a little bit of music right now as I will mute myself. Uh, so this will, you know what, the VOD will keep going for a little bit longer. So people don't get as much spoiled by the, uh, you know, the timer. If they do want to watch a VOD, I will put this on my YouTube as well. And then uh, people won't get spoiled as much um, if they, if they want to watch up until the end. Right. All right. So again, thank you guys. I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. And... Uh, yeah, bye-bye. <laughs>
Oh my god, it's Justin. Hello, Justin. Thank you for the follow, man. How you doing? It's good to see you here. You, you kind of missed the entire show, though. <laughs> um, but you know what? We'll have other games. I'm not sure. Uh, when exactly? Let me let me see, actually. I can, I can look it up. I got my phone right here. Got it all written down. Let me see. The next one should be uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, actually, at um, 8. That is Central European Summertime. Uh, I'm not sure what that translates into for you American folk, but uh, you know what? I'm not even going to try to translate that. It's it's 8. C A E S T. C E S. I'll just type it. You know what? I'll, I'm not going to bother pronouncing this. I think he already left as well. Oh well. Feels bad, man. <laughs> oh, next time. Next time. <laughs>